everybody should have their science books and their vocabulary notebooks out on their desk. Your vocabulary notebook should be open to a brand new clean page. We're not adding, we are starting a new lesson. Make sure you're using the backs and your science books can be open to page 44. The title of today's notes is chapter one, lesson, oops, not two, lesson three. three, and then today's date, August 25th, 2020. So your science book should be open in page 44. Your vocabulary notebook should be open to a clean page in the science section. So everybody really quick before we move on, make sure you're in the science section of your vocabulary notebook. That's the second section. Not the first and not the last. The title of your notes is chapter one, lesson three. So that should be written in the big empty spot on the top of your page. And then you should also have today's date, August 25th, 2020. Carla, did that answer your question about vocabulary? I had already answered that question. You just have to make sure that you're listening. So when I speak, this is for everybody. When I speak, you should not be raising your hand because what may and most likely is going to happen is that I am about to answer your question just by telling you directions. But if you have your hand up, you're not thinking about what somebody is saying to you. You're thinking about what your question is. So when I am speaking or when one of your classmates is speaking, your hand goes down. You listen to what I or what your classmate has to say. Then if whatever we said does not answer your question, then your hand goes back up. Does everybody understand that? That way we don't get the same question five or six times and I don't have to repeat directions that I've already said as often. Okay, so once you've written the title of today's notes and today's date, go ahead and put your pencil down and look at page 44. This lesson is all about the plant kingdom. Look at the look and wonder box and think while I read out loud. Think about your answer to these questions in the look and wonder box on page 44 while I read out loud. Have you ever wondered where food comes from? You might say the supermarket. But where does food really come from? The story begins with the sun and leaves. What do leaves have to do with making food? Now you may have no clue. You may have been like, wait, I think I've heard this before. You may have an idea, or you may have no clue what leaves have to do with making food. But after this lesson, you're gonna have a better idea. So, we know that food doesn't come from the grocery store. That's where we buy it from, but it doesn't actually come from there. It comes from somewhere else, then goes to the grocery store, then we buy it, then it comes to our house. It's not grown at the grocery store or anything like that. Go ahead and turn to page 46. People at school, go ahead and put on your face mask, your face shields. And then Aaron, once you have your face shield on, you can pull your mask below your chin and read us the main idea. Remember, we can find the main idea on that little picture of a bookmark all the way to the left on page 46. Aaron, read, pull your mask below your chin because your face shield's on and read loud all the way below your chin. There you go. And read loud and slow. Main idea. The roots, stems, and leaves of a plant help it get water, support itself, and make food. Good. So that's the main idea of this chapter. That means all everything that we read in this lesson is going to support that main idea. 
It's going to be a detail that supports that main idea. Thank you, Aaron. Go ahead, keep reading. Aaron, sorry. Don't forget to read the subtitles. Read loud. Girls at home, if you cannot hear, Aaron is just reading the very first paragraph on page 46. It's that big block of text at the top of page 46. But wait to see if you can hear her. Aaron, read really loud. How do we classify plants? Plants come in all sizes, all sizes and shapes and colors. Some are so small you can barely see them. Others can be as tall as skyscrapers. In all, there are about 400,000 different kinds of plants. There's probably even way more than that. Now, they've probably found hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands, since this book was published. Okay, thank you, Erin. So some plants are teeny, teeny, tiny, so small that we can't even see them. Some plants are massive, as tall as skyscrapers. Skyscrapers are those really big buildings. We call them skyscrapers because they look like they're scraping the sky. Thank you, Erin. Go ahead and read next, Victoria. Read loud and slow. Pull your mask below your chin because you have your face shield on. And girls at home, if you cannot hear her, she is reading the second paragraph or the second block of text on page 46. Read loud, don't forget um, subtitles. Classifying. Louder and sl louder and slower. Classifying by structures. One way to classify plants is by their parts or structures. Hold on a second. Carla, please stop playing with the camera. It's very distracting. It's fine. We can see you. That's all we need. Make sure you're following along in your textbook. Keep going. Scientists look at the shapes of leaves, the kinds of stems, and the shapes of roots. So in order to classify, remember classify means how are they grouping these plants? Well, there's lots of things that they're going to look at, but some of the things that they look at specifically with leaves, I mean, sorry, with plants, are the shapes of their leaves, the kinds of stems, and the shapes of their roots. Keep going. Some plants, Louder. Some plants do not have these structures. We can use these facts this fact to sort So that's one way they can classify. Before they even look at the shape and size of leaves, roots, and stems, they can figure out, okay, does the plant have leaves, stems, and roots, or does it not? But they're not going to stop there because then we would just have two really, really big groups. So now, Victoria, read that last paragraph or block of text on page 46. All plants need to move water from the, from the ground to their cells. Plants with roots, stems, and leaves have a system of tubes, tubes for them. Louder. Mosses and other plants that lack such structures grow close to the ground. They don't need a tube stem. Not stem, but system. They take in water directly from the soil. Good. So plants with roots, leaves, and stems have like tubes you inside those roots stems and leaves to bring water to all parts of the plant. It's like our veins. We have veins in our body that lead um, blood all throughout our body. Well, in a plant, they have the similar things inside their leaves, stems, and roots that transport water to all parts of the plant. But some plants don't have roots, stems, and leaves. So how do they get water? I'm not asking you to tell me some brand new information. How 
do plants without roots, stems, and leaves get water? Zari? They have a tube system. That's plants with roots, stems, and leaves. How do plants without roots, stems, and leaves, they don't have that tube system. So how do they get water? Zari, make sure to pay attention to the question. Kingston? They get it directly from the soil. Thank you, Kingston. What does that mean? Where do they have to grow, Kingston? Can they grow really tall if they have to get the water directly from the soil? Can they be really tall? Think of a really tall tree. How is the top of that tree, how would it ever get water directly from the soil when it's way up high? Would it be able to? without tubes running through its body? Colin, can you help them out? No. No, they're too high. They don't, these plants don't have those tubes through the stem, so where do they have to grow have so that they can get the water directly from the soil? They have to stay low to the ground. They have to stay low to the ground. So things like mosses. Who's seen moss on a, um, like a tree, on, the, uh, on a dead log? They have to grow, they're very short. Do they get really, really tall? No, they don't. They're really short, like at the most, maybe they're like this high. Look at the, cat, look at the picture on the bottom of page 46. This is another type of plant that does not have root stems or leaves. Read the caption. Who wants to read the caption? Michaela, read loud and slow. So wart plants do not have root stems or leaves. So where do wart plants have to grow? Michaela? Where do wart plants have to grow? Can they be big and tall? They don't have root stems and leaves, so they get water directly from the soil. Where do they have to grow? Low, Low to the ground, good. Okay, thank you people that just answered questions and thank you Victoria for reading. Smith, go ahead and read on page 47. Read loud and slow. Classifying by seeds. What do you find when you bite into an apple? At the apple's core are seeds. If you plant these seeds, they grow into apple trees. Then those trees make more apples and more seeds. You can keep going. We can classify plants by whether or not they have seeds. So that's another way that we can classify or group plants. Do they have seeds? Well, we'll put them in this group. Do they not have seeds? Okay, we're going to put them in that group. Keep going. Most plants that you are familiar with have seeds. In fact, most of the plants that have roots, stems, and leaves also have seeds and fruit. Good. Now it says most. Does that mean all plants with roots, stems, and leaves have seeds? Erin? No. No, because most means a lot, but it does not mean all. So if you see most, does that mean every single one? No. It means a lot, but not all of them. Okay, thank you, Smith. Smith, look at those flowers and read the um, caption underneath those flowers. La woo, flowers. Read loud and slow. The viola. Viola the or viola? The villa viola. plant. Villa. Viola. The viola plant has roots, stems, and leaves. Its offspring grow from seeds. So, the group we would put the viola plant in would be classified in the same group as plants that have roots, stems, and leaves, and plants that have seeds. But Smith, read to us about this other plant. 
on page 47. The horse tail plant has roots, stems, and leaves, but no seeds. So, would the horsetail plant and the viola plant be in the same group at this point? I'm looking for somebody who hasn't answered a question yet. Victoria? No. Why? No, because... Because the viola plant grows seeds and the horsetail plant doesn't. So it would be in the same group of plants that have roots, stems, and leaves, but then we'd have to put them in a separate group after that because viola plants have seeds, horsetail plants do not. Okay, thank you, Smith. Read next. Michaela, read slow and loud. Oh, that's not where we are. Plants Louder. Plants grow about a meter tail. Not tail, but tall. There you go. They have stems that look like horse tails. They also have roots and leaves, but horse tails have no seeds or fruit. How do they lead to the horse tail? Go slow, go slow. You're reading too fast. Don't skip punctuation. Okay. Hot, off, like, go back. Go, you're reading too fast. Start, horse tails produce. Horse tails produce offspring from spores. Spores, good. Other plants with roots, stems, and leaves use spores as well. Good. So, plants with seeds reproduce, or remember, create offspring from their seeds. Well, Plants without seeds still have to reproduce, otherwise they're going to die out and they're not going to exist anymore. But they reproduce differently. They reproduce with spores. And we will talk about spores later in this lesson, but probably not until tomorrow because we're going to do the second half tomorrow. Okay, any questions on pages 46 or 47? Any questions in the world as long as it has to do with the information on page 46 and 47 and I will try to answer it. Zari, quickly. How come the horsetail plant, it doesn't look like it doesn't have any leaves? Well, it does, but not leaves the way that we think of. These leaves kind of look kind of like needles, kind of like um, a pine tree or something like that. Those are technically leaves. They just look very different. So that is a way we can classify things based on the shape of their leaves. Do their leaves look like needles or are they flat? and wide like a an oak tree so that's another way that's why they classify based on leaf shape so sorry that was a really good question okay Carla and then we're gonna move on um I just noticed that um that the water plant had like have like a look of a bumpiness. Oh yeah, they do. It does look like it could be bumpy. So maybe that has something to do with um, getting water. They don't have leaves, so maybe those little bumps help it to get water somehow. I don't actually know, but we can uh, we can imagine that maybe that's what it's for. Okay, that's a great Carla. question, also, um, Carla. Yes. Okay, go ahead and turn the page and look at page forty-eight. Okay, so you should be on page 48, and go ahead and keep reading. Michaela, don't forget, go uh, slow and loud and read subtitles, and pull your mask below your chin. Slow and loud, almost like you're yelling. How do plants get what they need? About 400 years ago, a Dutch, a Dutch scientist named Van Helmont. Jan Van Helmont, because a lot of times in 
Dutch countries, they say the J like Y, but names, I may not even be pronouncing them right. So just do your best, sound it out. So we'll say Jan van Helmont. Jan van Helmont wanted to know, how can you meet the Go slow, go slow, slow down. After five years, the seedling became a small tree. Only a tiny amount of soil was missing from the top. Where did the plant go? The Not go, but where did the plant go? can chunk it. So cover up the last part of the word and read the beginning part. Cover up the first and the last part of the word and read the middle. Matt, er, er and then read the last part. Like I-A-L. Look at what I've got. Please don't do that. E O. Matt. Turn. Real. If I put all that together, Matt. Turn. Real. What word that you know does that sound like? Material. Material. Okay? Material Good. So let's look at this diagram down at the bottom of page 48. Make sure you're paying attention. Look at the diagram at the bottom of page 48. This is a diagram that shows Jan van Helmont's experiment. We can tell that because that's what the title is. So in his experiment, Jan van Helmont discovered that growing plants use only a very small amount of soil. That means that as plants grow, they don't take a lot of soil that goes away because look at where it started. We can tell where he started because it has the word start below the plant. The plant, the baby brand new seedling only weighed five pounds. The soil weighed 200 pounds, so he put this in a really big pot. The soil weighed 200 pounds. The plant itself weighed five pounds. Then if we follow the arrow to what happened next, it says five years pass, only water is given, so no fertilizer, nothing like that, just water. Then they basically unpotted the plant, they took the plant out, dried the soil and weighed it, then they weighed the plant separately and they found out that now the plant weighs 169 pounds. So it gained 164 pounds in five years. But the soil is 199 pounds and 14 ounces of soil. So there's only two ounces less of soil at the beginning, I'm sorry, than there was five years ago. So does a plant use up a ton of soil as it grows? No, it doesn't. We can see from this experiment. Make sure that you are following along. We can see from this experiment. Victoria, stop playing with it or else you're not gonna be able to have it anymore. So, keep reading to figure out what his conclusion was. Kingston. Loud and slow. Pull your mask below your chin. You have your face shield on. All the way below your chin, not just down a little. Read loud and slow. All the way down, Kingston, down here. Read loud and slow. Do you know where we are? Were you paying attention? 
you're supposed to be following along in your book. You could if you were listening, but if you were thinking about other things and you couldn't, you guys in school can hear each other. It's just the girls at home. Just know that if you aren't following along and I call on you and you don't know where we are, even if I let you find your place and read, you still have a consequence. If I have to show you, you definitely have a consequence. Loud? Van Helmont concluded that, that most of the material came from the water. He partly correct. Don't, you're skipping words. He was partly correct. Almost 100 years later, scientists found that the rest of the, of the material comes from carbon dioxide, a common gas material. So, before this experiment, people thought that where the plant comes from, like, because, you know, it starts small and it gets big, that, can't, that material can't come from nowhere, they originally thought it all came from the soil. So basically, as a plant gets bigger, the soil gets less and less and less. But then, after Van, Helm Van Helmont's experiment, they found out, okay, it's not coming from the soil, because there's still pretty much all of the soil left in this pot. So then he thought, okay, maybe the material comes from water. The water is where the material comes from. Well then, about 100 years later, scientists figured out that it doesn't all come from water. A very small amount of that material in the new plant comes from the soil, more comes from the water, and the rest comes from carbon dioxide. So three things come together to create the material in a growing plant. It can't come from nowhere, it doesn't just appear. It comes from a little bit of the soil, but not much, a lot of water, and a lot of carbon dioxide. And all of that comes together to create the rest of the plant, the growing plant. Okay, Kingston, keep going. We know, Louder. We know that trees and other green no, plants... No, you skipped a word. We now know that trees and other green plants use the energy from sunlight to make their own food. The heat ingredients are water and carbon dioxide. Good. So now, many, many, many years, so 300 years after people also realize that the material in plants comes from carbon dioxide, we also know that it also comes from the energy from the sun. So four things come together to create, to grow plants, to make them bigger. A little bit of soil, a good amount of energy from the sun, but mostly water and carbon dioxide. Okay, go ahead and read on page 49, Cullen. Pull your mask below your chin, you have your face shield on. Loud and slow. Don't skip words, don't add words. Make sure to pay attention to punctuation. The, the role of roots. Roots take up water and nutrients from the ground. Pause. We have a word that's yellow and bold. That means it's our first vocabulary word. So we have a one on the left side of the pink line. And then our vocabulary word, which is what, Cullen? Roots. Roots on the right side of the pink line. And Cullen, what are roots? I want you to add the word tubes, that do what? Tubes. Tubes. That. That take up water and nutrients from the ground. Good. Tubes. That take up water and nutrients. Nutrients. From the ground. Once you're finished with that definition, Colin, 
Give everybody just a second and then keep reading. Just a second, like you don't have to watch just because you're just giving them a second. Like so maybe count to 30. Fast, slow, and then read. Fast, slow means like one, two, three. You're not slow. One, two, three, but you're not really fast. One, two, three, four, five. They also keep plants. Firmly, 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 Flower. firmly in the soil. Some roots even store food. So, is the only purpose of roots to take water and nutrients from the ground? Is that the only purpose of roots? What other purposes do the roots have? Victoria, tell me one. Loud. Some roots store food. What other purpose do they have? Zari? Some, some take up water. Well, that's the definition that we have, so I'm looking for different ones, Zari. Victoria said they some store food. Some, some help keep keep um, the plant in the ground. Good. Pretty much all roots help to keep the plant in the ground. Because think about it. Raise your hand if you've ever had to help your parents pull weeds. Some of them don't come up so easily, do they? It's because of those roots that are in the ground. They're trying to do their job and keep it in the ground. So even weeds, the roots don't know, hey, this plant shouldn't be here. So they hold it in the ground. Good. Um, keep going, Cullen. Go slow and loud. Roots are covered with root hairs. These are thin cells that look like threads. Root hairs take in the water in nutrients that plants need. Now, notice I had Colin keep reading, even though usually we stop after a vocabulary word. That's because we have to take all three of those sentences and combine them into one definition. So Colin, you think you can do that? Take all three of those sentences to come up with our next definition. I mean our next, yeah, which is, what's our vocabulary word, Colin? Root hairs. Root hairs. If you think you can come up with one, once you have come up with a definition that includes all three of those sentences for root hairs, you may put your hand in the air. But Colin, I want you to keep trying. Think of a way that you can combine all three of those sentences that Colin just read into one definition. Once you have thought of one, you can put your hand up. Don't look at me, it's not here. Don't look at me. Victoria, I want you to try. What are root hairs? You can, you can say the direct words, but you can combine them into one definition. These are, they are cells that look like bread and they take up water nutrients for the plants. Excellent.
Excellent. Great job. So Victoria just took three sentences, and she combined them into one definition. She used the part that says thin, cell, thin cells that look like thread to do the first part of the definitions. Thin cells that look like thread. And then she used that next sentence to come up with the end of the definition. So thin cells that look like thread and take in water and nutrients. We don't really need to add that the plant needs because that's kind of obvious, but that's okay that you said that. Very good. So you guys are gonna get better and better at this because as we read some of the words are going to be they're not going to be quite written where right after the word is the definition so Cullen fast slow count to 30 and you can read that last paragraph in that section because your first two paragraphs were pretty short do the same jobs, but different plants have different kinds of roots. Carrots and It's nice that you're up close so I can do this. I can help you. Dan D Wolves. It's not working. Animal. Lions. So, Dan, D, D lions. lions. Put it all together, and it's the word dandelions. There you go. Laugh. Have one large root called a trap root. Grasses have. We can use the pronunciation key. Fibrous roots that spread out into the soil. So look at that picture on the top of page 49. That shows a diagram of what uh, Colin just told us. Some plants, like carrots and dandelions, have that one large root that's called a tap root. So the part of a carrot that you eat, you're eating a root. You're not eating the actual stem or leaves, you're just eating the root. But then other plants, like grasses, have fibrous roots that look like the ones on the right. Most plants, when you think of roots, you think of fibrous roots. But some plants have one large root called a tap root. Okay, thank you so much. So that is roots. Roots are very important. They take in nutrient waters from the soil. Carla, please read next on page 49. Read slow and loud and don't forget subtitles. She's reading, she just doesn't know. Oh, Carla, know. oh, I'm sorry. Don't forget to unmute yourself. That's okay, so start over. I thought you were finding your place. Pause. 
What's our third vocabulary word, Carla? Stem. Stems. And what do stems, what are stems? We're going to call them tubes that do what, Carla? Tubes that move food, water, and nutrients throughout the plant. Good. Tube, tubes, not tubes, tubes that move water, food, and nutrients through out the plant. Okay, Carla, when you're finished. Fast, slow, I think 30 is too long, so fast, slow, count to 15 in your head, then keep reading. Okay. Because I think 30 is a little too long. There are two kinds of stems. Oh, wait, Look. you have to read that last sentence first of that first paragraph. Stems also hold? Stems also hold. Slow, slow, slow down. You were doing good. Don't speed up now. At some point, my mouth kind of oh, do that to me. That's okay. Stem also hold the plant upright so it doesn't fall over. So roots and stems not only carry food and water and nutrients, but they also help the plant to have its shape and to stay up and to stay in the ground. Okay, keep going, Carla. Read that last paragraph. There are two kind of stem. Most trees oh, most trees and shrubs have wood stem. I mean woody stem. Woody stem protect the plants and give it extra support. Smaller plants have stems that is soft, green, and bendable. They rely on the pressure of water's watery sap for support. Very good reading, Carla. Thank you. Carla did. She read slow. She read loud. She read every word. You may have thought, if you're reading, you may think, oh, I'm reading way too slow. Nope, there's no such thing as reading too slow when you're reading out loud. The way I read to you guys when I read holes is much slower than what I would read to myself. So make sure you are reading loud and slow. Okay, so Carla just told us there are two types of stems. There's woody stems and there are non-woody stems. We can look at the picture to the side on page 49 to show the difference. The top one is the woody stem. It's strong, it doesn't bend. What can you think of that has a woody stem? What can you think of that has a woody stem? Erin? A tree. A tree! Because trees are really, really big. And think about it, if a tree had a non-woody stem, what would happen the first thunderstorm? Erin? It would break. It would blow over and break. And then we'd have no trees. So usually large plants, like trees and bushes that can get really big, have woody stems. They're very strong. It's hard to pull those out. If you have a tree to cut down, well, you can cut it, but somebody's going to have to come and dig out those roots and the bottom of the stem because it's too strong to just pull out. Now think about non-woody stems. Non-woody stems are soft and bendable. What can you think of that has a non-woody stem? Smith? A flower. A flower. Because flowers, do they ever get really, really big? Not really. Some of them get kind of big, like um, sunflowers. But even then, does a sunflower get as big as a tree? No, definitely not. So flowers are something that has a non-woody stem. They are easily bendable and pickable. Think about it. Would we ever put a tree or a bush in a bouquet to give to somebody? No. Part of that 
that reason is because this stem is too strong. We can't break it. So flowers are what we give because it's easy to pick them or pull them. Very good. Now it says that they rely on the pressure of watery sap. Have you ever picked a flower and then you touch the end of the stem and it felt wet right after you picked it? It wasn't in water, but it felt wet. That is that uh, watery sap that helps to support the plant. Okay, let's see. I think I'm not doing. No. Yes, Alex. Oh, somebody asked a question at school. What did you say? And that's what happens. Yes, correct. That's what happens. You know when you see plants and they're wilted? They're kind of bent and they don't look as nice. Like their petals and their leaves are just kind of like hanging there. Something has happened that that watery sap is not really watery anymore. If it's called watery sap, what do you think a lot of it is made out of? Zadie? Water. Water. And you've probably noticed if you don't water a plant, it droops. That's because that watery sap is not giving it the pressure to stay up. Very good. Okay, so we're done with science for today. You do have homework. It is the vocabulary for this lesson. So that means you don't need to bring your vocabulary notebook home because you don't even have all the vocabulary words. But you do need to bring your science book home because your science book has all the words. That means you may have to skim some of the stuff that's coming up, but you do not have to read, hold on, you do not have to read the rest of the lesson. You've done the vocabulary before. So on the front is the matching. What should you always do after you match a word to a definition? Colin? Go over and go over and look at it again. Go over it and check to make sure that it makes sense. So if you have the vocabulary word root and you say that it goes with definition G, which is a tube, well, no, which is a hole, a tiny hole in the bottom of a leaf. Would that make sense? Is that what a root is when you look in your book, Cullen? No. Yeah. No. So after you match those vocabulary words, check to make sure that it makes sense. On the back, you have that long paragraph where you fill in the blanks. What should you always do after you fill in the blanks? Not just check it, but what should you do after you fill in all the blanks? Zari? You should see if you use um, all of the words and if you may, and if you don't, um, and if you didn't use all the words, you use them twice. Well, that could be, but we're not really worried about that because sometimes word banks don't give us enough words because we have to use one word more than once. Sometimes word banks give us more than enough, so that means we're not going to use some words. So we're not always going to rely on the word bank to tell us how many words we need to use. But what you do need to do after you fill, fill in all of those blanks is that you need to go back and read it with the okay. words you put in the blank. Does it make sense? Because if the sentence was, plants rely on blank to take up water and nutrients from the soil, and you put the word respiration in there, and then you reread the sentence and it says, plants rely on respiration to take up water and nutrients from the ground, would that make sense? No. No. Yeah. So when you, re when you fill in a blank, after you fill in all the blanks on that paragraph, no. go back and read the whole paragraph and make sure that the words that you chose made sense. 